Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we have our monthly look back at the 10 best scoring games in terms of reviews featured on the channel last month, the month of course of April. We reviewed 11 games in April in total so of course one of them hasn't made the cut and we'll start off with the game in 10th place not having the best score to be fair all the way up of course until the game with the best score up in first place. Just a quick bit of housekeeping before we start then, at the time of me recording this audio for this video, our review for new Pokemon Snap is in the process of being written. So it won't feature in this video, although the game came out on the last day of April. Chances are, by the way we schedule it, you probably would have seen that review by the time you're watching this one, but it will of course be in the next Roundup video, the one for the end of May. I just want to say a big thank you to all of the new subscribers we've had over the month of April. Whether you found our channel through this particular video series or one of our other videos, it means a great deal having you with us, thank you very much. Right, with all that said then, which game's got the best scores? Let's find out. Coming in in 10th place for the month then, and to be fair, in most months where we do more than 11 reviews, this game would have been nowhere near the top 10, but it is Castaway Paradise. This is a life simulation game set on an island, with the most obvious comparison I guess being Animal Crossing, in terms of the game's mechanics. Now to be fair to the game, it is quite hands off in what it allows you to do and how it allows you to do it, and there is a lot of content. You'll be growing crops, fishing etc, the usual fare for this sort of game, but it is quite a streamlined experience in how it goes about presenting these particular mechanics. It can be fun in short bursts and it's priced appropriately, but it does get very repetitive and there is just a general lack of polish, which I suppose you could counter with the aforementioned lower price. All in all, not a terrible game, but you'll definitely see the leap up in quality for every other game on this list and it's got a switch up score of 59%. In ninth place for the month then was Star Wars Republic Commando. Now this came out originally back in 2005 and is a first person tactical shooter set in the Star Wars universe. You play as a member of Delta Squad in a number of team based missions. And in terms of this Switch port, whilst the gameplay is as fun as ever and those team mechanics definitely hold up, its performance isn't great which is very disappointing for a game that's over 15 years old. A lack of features such as gyro controls also exacerbates this, making it feel like they didn't really fit the game to the console it was being ported to. Having said all that, like I said the gameplay is still strong and the price is fairly reasonable and if you loved it back in the day you'll love it all over again for sure. It got a switch up score of 72%. In 8th place for the month then was a game called Cozy Grove. This is the second life simulator on this list after the 10th place game Castaway Paradise and this one definitely fares better. Again similar to Animal Crossing in some respects but with a few elements from games like Don't Starve thrown in for good measure. You will be gathering resources, mining, fishing etc but also trying to open up more of the island by way of your spirit friends. Now this does cause a certain problem because the way you do this is by accepting missions which can boil down sometimes to glorified fetch quests, but the game does have a few interesting features which can allow you to see past this problem. It's set in real time and there is a limit to how much you can do each day which kind of keeps you coming back for more and does prevent a bit of burnout in some respects too. It's definitely a relaxing experience and is priced appropriately and it does have a beautiful visual style. As well as those repetitive missions though there are also some performance issues which is unfortunate although I have heard that the developers are looking to get this patched. A fun game though and one that fans of the genre will no doubt find a lot of positives in and it got a switch up score of 73%. In 7th place for the month was a game called Smelter. Now this is an interesting blend of 2D platforming and real time strategy slash tower defense in some respects and it is very similar to a game that came out on the Super Nintendo, a classic game called Act Razor. You play as Eve who after the fall of the Garden of Eden must try to find Adam and she does this by fusing with a creature named Smelter who presents her with certain abilities that allow her to get through the platforming sections. 
These platforming sections are a lot of fun and were my favourite parts of the game by quite a stretch and you play the top down strategy sections as Smelter looking to defend his land from invaders. These sections weren't quite as fun for me, they were quite difficult and just slowed the pace of the game down a tad and I think to get the most fun out of this game you have to be truly on board with the hybrid nature. What I mean by that is if you like platformers, you're best off playing a 100% platforming game. If you like real-time strategy, there's probably better options, but if you like the idea of both together, this does it pretty well. Overall, this got a switch up score of 74%. Next, one of the more recent reviews, this was Battleaxe. Battleaxe is a loving homage to arcade games of the 90s and was heavily inspired, so I read, by Gauntlet. It reminded me a bit more of games like Wizard Fire or Gate of Doom and most definitely reminded me of a console game, funnily enough, and that being Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. The game was created by Henk Nyborg, who is a stalwart of the industry, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Really does now that 90s arcade aesthetic. Unfortunately, it's not particularly long. If you're good at the game, you could beat it in about half an hour. You won't beat it that quick unless you are an absolute Jedi. I mean, you'll have a few failed attempts first, but even then, you're looking at about, I don't know, two to four hours of tops. This coupled with the price of £25 does make it hard to be an instant recommendation, but that doesn't take away from how much fun you can have with it if you are on board with the premise. That high price definitely affected the score, but even so, it got a switch up score of 76%. The next game then was Lost Words Beyond the Page, which I think chronologically was the first review of this month. This tells a story written expertly by Rihanna Pratchett and has an interesting mix of a diary mechanic which feeds very well into the strong narrative and is fused with platforming elements. Some of the controls are quite clunky, which is a shame, but the game is priced very well. And as I said, the story does keep you gripped until the end. It's not a particularly long game, but it almost falls into that category of an experience, one that you are happy to have witnessed, if you know what I mean. There's a few games like that these days. If you can look past a few shortcomings, it's definitely one that's worth at least putting on your wish list, and it got a switch up score of 77%. In fourth place for the month was a game called Astro Aqua Kitty. Now this is a sequel to a game called Aqua Kitty that is already on the Switch and whereas that was a more modern version of the arcade game Defender, this takes that side-scrolling shooter premise and puts it into more of an open world. You will be fulfilling certain objectives in order to open up more of the game world and then travelling on to the next area. There are a host of different weapons to find and attach to your ship and each of these have a different way of working and it is quite fun trying out the different weapons, trying to find one that not only fits your playstyle but also fits certain scenarios such as the bosses which are really difficult. The game in general is actually quite hard, it's not an easy game by any stretch but it is a lot of fun. There is some repetition in some of the objectives given which is a shame, things like complete this, great now do it four more times, but I did feel that the fast and furious nature of the the gameplay did carry the game through these leaner stretches. A fun experience and it got a switch up score of 79%. Into the top three for the month now, and the next game is Saga Frontier Remastered. Now this game originally came out on the PlayStation, and I believe I'm right in saying is the seventh game in the Saga series. It gives you a host of characters to choose from and you can play all of their stories and although it doesn't have an overarching narrative that ties it all together, various characters will show up in each other's stories to give the impression of a larger world being built. It's a turn-based RPG but you have to give the Saga series credit in that the early entries seem to introduce mechanics that weren't necessarily commonplace in RPGs at the time and in this particular entry you have the combo system. Putting together moves from each of your characters may build into a combo move that does huge damage and it is fun trying to find these out. 
This remastered version actually puts content back in that was cut out from the original game, including a whole new character with their own story arc. And to be fair, I was very impressed with how this did the name remaster justice. It wasn't just a case of a bit of spit and polish, it really did go that bit further. When you throw in the pre-rendered backgrounds, which whilst looking their age, it was a lovely throwback to that style of game design from the 90s, and this game does hold up very well, it got a switch up score of 84%. In second place for the month was a lovely little surprise called Legend of Keepers. This in terms of its premise is very similar to legendary game Dungeon Keeper, whereby you are managing a dungeon trying to keep the heroes out, but does it by way of a turn-based roguelite with management elements. You will need to set up traps and order monsters to try and defeat the heroes that are coming into the dungeon, and there are scenarios and branching paths that almost tie in with a choose your own adventure type game. Then you have that turn based combat that has a lot in common with something like Slay the Spire, and you really do have something that is incredibly interesting and great fun to play. The addictive gameplay, familiar yet unique mechanics, and a great pick up and play nature to proceedings make this a very easy recommendation, even when you factor in a few small stutters here and there, and it got a switch up score of 87%. And in first place for the month of April, the return of an absolute classic, this is Fez. Now Fez first came out on the Xbox 360 via Xbox Live in 2012 and is a puzzle game where you have to rotate the whole world in order to find hidden doors and make your way to the end of the levels. What sets it apart from many other puzzle games though is just how expertly crafted it is and how incredibly refined the worlds feel. The worlds themselves never feel static and there's a huge amount of variety between each one. The sense of exploration as you look for the golden cubes and the feeling of euphoria as you finally find them really is unmatched and this game holds up incredibly well even what almost 10 years later. The art style looks fantastic and that perspective switching mechanic is also very good at hiding what could be quite an intricate level behind what initially looks like a very simplistic view. And I haven't even mentioned the audio yet which is absolutely stellar. For the price it's going for if you haven't played it before certainly it's well worth picking up and it may even tempt a few old timers to double dip. It got an incredible switch up score of 94%. So there you have it, there's another month of Switch Up reviews, a nice bit of variety in there and some games you may not have heard of and as always the links to all 10 of those reviews as well as a couple of other videos you may find useful. We did a multi-review video for example during the month, I'll stick that down there too. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.